Hey, this is CrossFitTracking.com, and today I want to do a simple review of Garmin's training effect and training load and the benefits for CrossFit evaluation as well as improving your overall fitness and CrossFit strength. First, I want to just sort of touch on what the calculations are based on. So Garmin uses First Beats analytics, and First Beat, you know, has a lab and they evaluate uh, the real world um, oxygen consumption as well as heartbeat strain and and compile all that and develop algorithms around it to develop um, an evaluation of your training effect for the exercise itself, as well as the training load that your body is under over a seven day period, a four week period, things like that. Um, but the training effect is actually probably one of the most important metrics for evaluating the strain or the impact of a CrossFit workout and how you are improving your overall depth of physical fitness over a period of time. And so I think it's a really important, I've noticed it recently in some workouts I've done based on some injury I've been recovering from and how it really does evaluate um, the level of impact as well as the level of strain. Um, I'll share a little bit about that. Um, but the way it calculates it is it takes it from a score of zero to five. So the further up the score you go, the further benefit or impact on your overall fitness level that workout itself accomplished. Um, what they do is they have an algorithm to, through the heart rate tracking, to estimate or evaluate your EPOC, which is your excess post-oxygen consumption. So basically, they take your baseline of your VO2 max, which is just your body's ability to maintain exercise and maintain a heart rate. So the speed of an exercise, specifically running or biking, and the heart rate over time to evaluate your baseline uh, fitness level. And that fitness level determines from the heart rate evaluation of a particular workout, how much excess oxygen your body is requiring to keep up with the intensity of the workout. That's sort of a, you know, simple, but you can look on First Beat's website to be able to read some white papers as well as to see this in greater detail. Uh, depth, but it basically evaluates, and this is the most important aspect of it, is it evaluates your exercise intensity across the duration. So the longer the intensity occurs and the longer the duration of the workout occurs, the more impact it has on your overall um, physical fitness. Um, so it's the physiological impact of the physical activity based on the heart rate heartbeat data by making assumptions for what your body is requiring excess oxygen wise <gasps> to keep up with the workout because it is such a significant strain. So the VO2 max, it defines your, your personal cardiovascular aerobic fitness level, and it takes it through a combination of your heart rate coupled with the speed, either you're moving a bike or moving and running to evaluate your overall ability to um, run fast and not have it affect your heart rate. So when your fit VO2 max level gets better, then your ability to maintain a strain on your heart or on your body um, and keep up with that strain improves. So um, what the training effect does is it just calculates that excess impact or the amount of strain and puts it in a number score system so that you can see, did I overstrain if you're in the four to five? then you're highly improving, but likely um, creating excess strain on your body. And if you're in the lower metrics, then you're not really improving your VO2 max or you didn't put much strain on your body. But it really correlates to the impact of tracking your CrossFit um, uh, strength or CrossFit improvement over time. And so CrossFit takes the intensity of all these different movements and all these different um, motions and puts a heavy deal of strain on your body, which is, you know, probably the premier way of improving uh, physical fitness. And the training effect metric that Garmin puts on some of their watch lines um, helps you to evaluate what that impact is. So they calculated on the newer watches in two different ways, the aerobic training effect, the impact on your aerobic and the training effect on your anaerobic. Anaerobic is a little bit different in the sense that it evaluates the high intensity intervals a little bit more specifically, segments like sprints and short bursts of sustained or prolonged high intensity activity are evaluated on the anaerobic effect of a workout itself. Um, so both of these 
two things play a role into being able to have a window into how much improvement you're getting from a workout and how hard you pushed yourself in that workout so that you can sort of gauge what your next workout might look like or how you're improving. Uh, the way I noticed it recently is that I have been recovering from an injury and haven't been doing as consistent of CrossFit workouts. I've been doing more just assault bike intervals or um, just, you know, uh, biking intervals. And so my fitness level was overall you know, not as good. So I went back into more intense CrossFit workouts and I noticed for the first time my training effect just completely spiked, which to me was a correct evaluation. And I'll break it down in a couple different workouts in particular. We had um, the 12 days of Christmas where you had this, you know, you go through a series of, you know, one rep of one thing and then two reps of another and then that same one rep of the other thing, three reps of another movement and then the two reps of the original and then one of the last thing and you work your way up to, to 12. It was a 40 minute workout and after about 20 minutes, I felt like I was just straining to get through it. You just start to feel like I, I just can't, I can't do the rest of this workout. I'm hitting, you know, a complete wall and complete felt breakdown of my ability to mentally stay into it. And I made it through all 40 minutes and my training effect on both the aerobic and the anaerobic was a 5.0, which is the highest capacity it possibly could be. And you look at it and at the halfway point, I felt like I almost had to quit. I almost just felt like I was dying through the last half of the workout. Um, additionally, went back to, you know, regular salt and just sort of the low effort exercise because this ongoing injury and ongoing uh, recovery process. So I went to another CrossFit workout that was a 37 minute workout, not as intense as the 12th days of Christmas, but still had, you know, high level intensity. After about 25 minutes, I felt like I hit a wall and the last 12 minutes was just this strain just to get to the next exercise, the next movement, and just to get through it. Um, and it gave me a score of 4.7 on the aerobic effect. Um, which, you know, both of those things helped me just to see the impact or the purposeful use of this. And I'll show you a little hands-on on how it looks on a watch, but that's not as important as the benefit that it provides in having on a watch for evaluating your CrossFit expansion. Um, so when I hit a hard wall because my fitness level was not high enough and I hit the hard wall earlier, the metric knew it. Like the training effect evaluation showed it. It was like, you were dying and you went overboard and I did and I was sore you know, pretty extensively the next couple of days after. Same thing when you hit a hard workout, still about with a third of the workout left and you were straining in that last third, again, the analytics knew it and they saw that you were, you were dying in this and this was pacing probably excess strain because it gave me a 4.7. So it knows when you went too far and so you can be able to gauge how your body is improving, your fitness level is improving by being able to see, did the workout push you beyond? And then as you improve your fitness level, it takes more and more to get you to the higher score numbers because whatever they're doing on the analytics or the algorithms, they know when your body can keep up and when it can't keep up and when it's under heavier load and considerably heavier load than you're normally under to be able to evaluate um, what the benefit or the impact is, whether you're over, you're straining, you're overkill, and or you're just in the improving state. So you can take your CrossFit workouts and you can be able to gauge how intense they were. And if you need to up the intensity for the next workout, because you got just a, a you know, high twos or a 3.0 on the training effect evaluation, or if you're getting in a 4.5 and you say, okay, well, I, I, I went beyond that day, probably need to scale it back a little bit or have the next two days of workouts be a little bit less rigorous. Um, second to that is the training load. I'm not going to speak as much specifically because it's sort of a simple concept. When you are consistently working out and placing your body under high strain, your load is consistently at a higher level. You know, conversely to that, when you're not as consistently working out and your load is overall low over a seven day period, then your body is not as used to high intensity or prolonged intensity for longer periods of time over a multiple of days. So as you're building your CrossFit regimen or building your CrossFit goals, you can take the load as well as the effect and couple those two together. So the training load just helps me to get a gauge for, let's say in the beginning of the year, January 1, I want to get back to a higher fitness level. Well, I need to start building my load as I also am watching 
the effect of each individual workout. So each workout calculates a certain level of load or strain on your body, and that accumulates over the course of the week. So you can start to build your load over time and set a really good goal path or plan to increasing your overall fitness, but increasing your ability to maintain an intensity to your CrossFit training program. And that's why I feel like these are almost required components of a true CrossFit tracking device, which is the whole premise of this website is what is the best CrossFit tracking device and what has the most usefulness to it. The whole reason I brought wanted to do this video is because I did notice that it was spot on with my fitness level and my where I'm at in my training or lack of training because of the injury. And it was 100% accurate for evaluating it. So therefore the metric is 100% useful in my opinion and an important part. So I just wanted to touch on it just briefly in a video here. I'll go through just a little bit of a hands-on when you can see it in the watch and the impact of the, the workout um, and those specifically those two I, I talked about. Again, thanks so much, CrossFitTracking.com. Hey, this is CrossFitTracking.com just to show you a little bit of the load calculations or the training effect and training load calculations um, on the watch itself. All this does tie into the recovery evaluation as well, which I didn't mention in the video. Um, the six as well as the 945 has the most detailed components uh, for each of these. So if you can go into the activity, my activities have been relatively weak, just doing minor stuff. Um, you can track down to some of the more intense activities um, that I've done that produced a high level of strain. So here, 40 minutes, it was the 12 days of Christmas. Uh, my average heart rate was 165, which is, you know, just really abnormally high and um, 580 calories. So you can see when each workout comes up, um, the six as well as the 945 gives you, um, you know, highlighted for what your biggest impact was. So this says the biggest impact was on the anaerobic side, but you can see I capped out the aerobic and the anaerobic uh, training effect, the load itself. So think of it like this way, my load across a whole week um, prior to this was like 350. This one workout put a load on my body of 550. So well outside of the, the norm. Um, so it was overreaching there, overreaching there. Um, but that's what each workout does. It calculates the load or impact both in aerobic capacity and anaerobic capacity for one particular workout. Um, you can see, you know, obviously it has the heart rate. Um, you know, you can see that I spent most of the time in the ultimate highest, which is why I was just under so much significant strain. Um, so you can go back to another CrossFit workout that I did that was a higher strain one. It was, you know, average heart rate of 149. This included a little bit of warm up and a 37 minute workout. Uh, you can see the training effect here, training effect benefit, the overall focus benefit, which is what the 945 and the 6 do, um, is they give you like sort of the primary benefit out of all the detailed benefits that you may have, have taken on. So this one just gave me a robot workout. This did include a little bit more um, just assault bike and things that were more aerobic in nature rather than um, interval in nature. So you can see the load calculation for this workout was 269 and um, highly impacting VO2 max. And then the anaerobic was not as calculating, you know, impact on VO2 max. And you can compare this to um, a basic, you know, like a salt bike, or this was just a regular bike. This was an assault bike. I just I categorized it as a elliptical. This sort of gave me, you know, a whole different impact. So yes, improving, yes, 1.3, but you can see the load is three nine, was 94. That one 40 minute workout gave me a load of 550, which just meant that my overall fitness level was not at all at the point where it could handle that intensity for that length of time. So it just said my load was through the roof. As you improve, your ability to accumulate load goes down as well. So here you can see that I'm, you know, improving my aerobic, slightly improving my anaerobic. Obviously it was an interval training on um, an assault bike. So not um, as impactful in the impact there. Here was just a biking interval training, um, or maybe that was just a biking with the kids, but you can just sort of see um, low is sort of a baseline. This is a low level. See my training, my load itself was two, was 39. So you take that into account and you compare it to the load on this 37 minute CrossFit workout. And you can see that um, 
the training effect here was a load of 269 and obviously the 40 minute was 550 was just off the charts but all that just sort of helps us to see is that the calculations that the watches are doing are correctly evaluating how much strain you're placing on your body which helps you prepare for the next workout as well as have an awareness of how hard you really pushed your body in the workout itself which i think is a fundamental aspect of how you evaluate your CrossFit training on a daily basis over a period of time. So again, these are the effects here and they amass really well in this watch. You can see all the details, um, but having these metrics is an important part of evaluating your CrossFit journey and process. So again, thanks so much, CrossFitTracking.com.